As 1.21 gets more snapshots, we're seeing more and more features that are making the update look really exciting. The brand new crafter is one of my favorite new additions. The new tough blocks all look fantastic. They removed one of the reasons the copper bulb was so good. Why did they do that? But in the most recent snapshot, they added a new block that I think is one of the most important blocks they have ever added to the game. That block is the vault. Now at first, this just seemed like a mildly interesting inclusion, but upon thinking about it more, I think this block has the potential to fix my single biggest problem with the entire game. But what is the vault, and what is the problem I think it could fix? Well, that's what we're here to discuss today. The reason I want to talk about this now is because the problem I have hasn't been resolved yet, but as snapshots are still happening, it could be solved if enough people want it. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, at 200k I'm ranking every 2D Mario level, and let's jump right into what the vault actually does. A lot of people don't actively keep up with the snapshot, so I think it's important we cover what the vault does first. Wait, you're saying you have actual lives and can dedicate every waking second to what new wacky block Minecraft is adding? How could you? The vault will be found in the game's brand new trial chambers, which seem to be the primary focus of this update. Right off the bat, can I just say I'm already a big fan of these. They're massive underground dungeons with a ton of different rooms, each with a large assortment of chests and trial spawners. The mobs from these trial spawners are also pretty interesting too. They have the basics like zombies, skeletons, and spiders, but also some unique ones like skeletons that shoot poison arrows and the new breeze mob. The trial spawners work a bit differently than normal spawners though, as they don't infinitely spawn in new mobs. No farming poison arrows for you. While that might be a disappointment to some, that does allow for a brand new mechanic. Once you defeat all the mobs from a trial spawner, you'll get a random item. As of making this video, there are 8 different ones you can collect. Those being glow berries, emeralds, baked potatoes, golden carrots, ender pearls, potions of regeneration, and potions of strength. Those are definitely pretty decent, but if you've been counting along at home, you may notice that that was only 7 instead of 8. Who am I getting? You guys can't count. That's because I haven't mentioned the last item yet, being the brand new trial key. Also, apparently you can get these from decorated pots too. Figure I should mention that. This is a 50% chance to appear from every trial spawner, but for the longest time, we had absolutely no idea what it actually did. That was until the introduction of the vault. As it turns out, the freakishly stretched out face is not just for decoration, as you can shove a key inside of it to unlock the vault. Upon doing so, the player will be rewarded with several different items. Now, Mojang has said that the loot tables for this item will change in the future, but we might as well cover what you can get from it now. Currently, it gives 19 different items, those being enchanted books, emeralds, iron horse armor, shields, enchanted iron axes, enchanted iron pickaxes, enchanted iron armor, gold horse armor, enchanted crossbows, enchanted golden apples, diamond horse armor, enchanted diamond axes, diamond chest plates, and diamonds. <laughs> Definitely some pretty solid loot here, especially early game. But after seeing that, you may be thinking, so it's just a locked chest? Well, it's still got some more properties we haven't discussed yet. Even if it was just a locked chest though, I think it'd be pretty cool. I mean, it actually forces you to take on the challenges of the trial chambers, and I think that's great. But what makes the vault so important is its other use. The trial chambers are quite unique from Minecraft's other structures, and that it's very multiplayer centric. They mentioned this at Minecon Live, but for those that missed it, the chambers will actually get harder the more people there are. In single player, only two mobs from each trial spawner can be alive at a time, with you needing to defeat six in total to get the loot. With every additional player though, one more mob can be alive at once, and two more mobs will need to be defeated to get the loot. Good thing I don't have any friends, so I won't have to worry about that. Yippee! This is a really cool mechanic, and I'm really looking forward to raiding one of these with a big group. But why do I bring it up in relation to the vault? Well, that's because this also got a multiplayer use as well, and it's what makes the vault so important. Have you ever been really excited to finally find a structure, only to go inside and see all the good loot is taken? I'm just kidding, that's a normal jungle temple chest. Well, the vault attempts to fix this multiplayer problem of someone taking all the loot before everyone else. Each player can only use the vault key once, basically just like opening a chest and taking the loot. However, even if it's been opened before, a different player is able to open the same vault and get the same loot. That is a perfect addition for this structure, as it makes it much more worthwhile to actually raid with friends. At first, that's basically all I thought about this, a cool block that works really well with the trial chamber's multiplayer theme. But as I thought about it more, this has the potential to fix my current biggest problem with the game, with only a few minor tweaks. I think it's time we see what that problem actually is. A few months ago, when the Trails and Tells update was on its way, I made a video covering my personal biggest issue with it, the Netherite Upgrade Template. Now that by no means was a controversial video. Looking back at it, I don't think there was a single person defending the template, which is how you know it's bad. I've seen people defend the phantoms, there's a lot of sickos out there. As a recap though, my problem was a bit different than many others. I'm personally fine with the idea of needing an upgrade template, and I'm also on board with it costing 7 diamonds to duplicate. Netherite armor is the best gear in the game after all, so it should probably be hard to get. Plus it gives diamonds a bit more of a use too which could encourage some more mining. My problem though is how you have to get the template in the first place. It can only be found in bastions, however even then it's not a guarantee. Most bastion chests only have a 10% chance to come with one, with the only exception being the treasure bastion which has it 100% of the time. Now in a single player world, I think that's pretty fair, but problems start to seriously arise when it comes to multiplayer. Bastions are somewhat rare structures, so it's not out of the realm of possibility for someone to go loot them all and take the templates for themselves. Then for new players to the world, it just becomes a frustrating experience trying to 
find an unrated Bastion. Heck, even if just a few nearby get raided, it's extremely frustrating, since now they have to work significantly harder to get the gear they want, especially if they don't have access to the seed to find the Bastion locations easily. Now, in my video, I did propose a solution, which I still think is good, but it did get some understandable criticism. I said they should make the Netherite upgrade templates an extremely rare Piglin Barter, so rare that it would just be easier to find a Bastion in single player, but it'd leave the option open in multiplayer. Now, that does take away from the need to go to Bastions at all, which I feel like might go against what Mojang was trying to go for with this feature. Additionally, people thought it'd be too easy to farm the template from bartering, even if it was really rare. I think they could have it so each individual piglin only ever trades one template to make farming it a hassle, but regardless of what you thought of my solution, I don't think it's the one they should go for now. The vault perfectly addresses both the issues I have with the template and the issues people had with my solution. The vault removes the need to worry about chests being looted in multiplayer as everybody gets access to it no matter what. The vault also still forces players to actually go to the structure and there's no way for them to farm for it. Unless they make a billion alt accounts, but why would you do that? There is just one problem. The vault isn't in Bastions. As of now, there's been no announcement of any kind saying that the vault will be added to other structures. Right now, it is a trial chamber exclusive, and the reason I'm making this video is because I really don't want it to be. I don't think it has to be in every structure, or heck, even every Bastion, but just putting one in a treasure Bastion with another right upgrade template would be a fantastic change. This isn't the only structure I think should have it, though. While putting it in others could be nice, there is one more that I think needs it. Long before the netherite upgrade template, there was another piece of gear tied to structures that shared many similar issues. That of course being the elytra. The only way to get this is in end ships, which only spawn in 25% of end cities. Elytra are the best method of travel in the game by far, so it's super important that players can actually get them. In fact, I'd say they're more important than getting netherite. Now why didn't I bring them up in my original video then? I kinda cheat when I play. <laughs> In my multiplayer worlds, I play with a few data packs from Vanilla Tweaks. Mostly it's so I can get more mob heads. What would I do without a light gray sheep head? But I also play with one that makes the Ender Dragon drop an Elytra so my imaginary friends can also get one. If they put an Elytra vault in the end ships though, I won't have to do this anymore, and I think for the sake of those that don't play with data packs, they absolutely should add this. Now there are some problems that come up if they were to just add the vault to these structures as is. Let's just say you go up to an end ship to get your Elytra, see the vault, and- Huh? Yeah, there's no key, you can't open it. I think there are two possibilities of how they could fix this. First off, it's just not requiring a key at all, which would definitely be the most simple solution. Just letting people go up to it and right click would probably be their best bet. The Bastions aren't necessarily about taking on all the piglet inside though, so I don't think a key is necessary. However, if they did want to add a key, how would they? Well, for Bastions, I think this is fairly simple, piglin bartering. That makes keys always accessible to any player, which is important as that's the whole point of wanting the Volts here in the first place. I think they could also make piglin brutes drop keys too. For how hard they are to defeat, they don't have any drops inside a big amount of XP. That leads to me and many others just trying to avoid them rather than fight, but if they make them a guaranteed source of keys, then I think it would make players approach Bastions differently. I would only want this in addition to the barters though, as Piglin Brutes don't respawn. And I don't want them to respawn, those things are terrifying. As for a key for the end ship, I was struggling a bit with this one. I think this would probably just be best not to have a key. People already want to fight the Shulkers for their shells, so there's no need to make them fight more. If they really want to add a key though, there are two ideas I came up with. First, they could just make it craftable using pop chorus fruit, which would work, but it just sort of complicate the process without making it much more interesting. The other method would be kind of fitting though, and that'd be to have the dragon drop the key. This would then sort of build off the data pack I use. First, it ensures that players need to actually defeat the dragon before they get an elytra. Surprisingly, this wasn't actually a requirement before because you could always just make a flying machine and escape to the end islands before even defeating the boss. Huh? This would make it so new players would also have to defeat the dragon so they don't just get a free pass after the dragon is dead. Now this does raise the issue of group dragon fights, which most people including myself like to do. Since the trial chambers are able to scale with multiplayer though, I think scaling the number of keys the dragon drops based on the players on the main island could be good. But again, that's all assuming they want to have a key at all. They could very easily implement the vault to not need any item to open. So I think that covers the main things I want the vault to be able to do. Give the player the netherite upgrade template in Bastions and Elytras in End Cities. Personally, I don't think any of the other structures need to have them just because their loot can either be gotten elsewhere or just aesthetic armor trim, so who cares? Me, I care. Maybe they could add a sponge one for ocean monuments, but besides that, I think this would be good. I do have one other minor thing I thought I should bring up though. Currently, the vault is destructible by mining. You can't move it with pistons or destroy it with TNT. <laughs> but you can mine it. This could possibly cause issues if you're playing with a sneaky snitch who destroys the vault once they loot them. Luckily though, the time it takes to mine this block is absurd, so that'll probably discourage most people from trying. Honestly though, I wouldn't mind too much if these were just indestructible. Some structures have indestructible blocks like bedrock and end portal frames, so it's not unheard of, but I understand them being hesitant. Plus people will always find a way to break them anyway. Maybe make it a game rule so people have the option to make it breakable or not. If they keep it as it is, then it's perfectly fine, but I just thought I should throw this on at the end.
But anyways, that's it for this video. Do you hate me for not putting the vault in warm ocean ruins? Let me know in the comments. This is a really short video, I know, but I wanted to praise this feature just because I think it's a great idea that could be greatly expanded upon. I'm honestly really looking forward to this update, by the way. The crafter and trial chambers seem like so much fun. But anyways, dry bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time.